Did you know that faith sees things differently? That's right, you can see your circumstance, even yourself, differently when you look through the eyes of faith. Find out how. Why live a normal life when you could be living the abundant life? Welcome to the Abundant Life Program with Ashley and Carly Terradez. Hello and welcome to Abundant Life. We're so glad you've joined us today. Praise God. We've got an exciting program because we're talking about faith. We're talking about everyday faith and about how faith can work in your life. Faith is how we receive the promises of God, praise God. And uh, I'm telling you, we're halfway through a a series. I'd encourage you to get the rest of this uh, teaching because it's really going to help you. But we've been talking about lots of different things about faith. We need to give like a little recap, I guess, because there's people that haven't watched the previous Mm -hmm. show. So real quick recaps on some of the things we've been teaching. Well, we started out by talking about that. This is Romans 1, 17, that just shall live by faith, that we were designed to, to be in relationship with God and to be in a place of trust and confidence with Him. The very word faith is from the Greek word pisteo, and it means to be fully persuaded, to trust or commit unto, that we are supposed to, our, our life in in fact, is supposed to live in conjunction with God. It's dysfunctional otherwise. I mean, the norm, the right? normal Christian life is to live by faith. Yep. You know, um, it's to walk by faith and not by sight. Right. We also looked at how grace has already provided everything that we're receiving through faith anyway. So faith isn't making God do something. Faith isn't moving the arm of God. Faith is just receiving what God's already provided for us. Right. God's already provided for us. Uh, we'll use the example of a Christmas present, right? So, mm-hmm. so we, the present is ours. That's grace. Grace has provided the, the gift, if you like. Now our faith unwraps it exactly. and receives it and uh, gets the benefit of it. Exactly. So faith is basically putting more trust and confidence in what the Word of God says about our situation than how we feel about it. It's going beyond the natural circumstances into a spiritual world. And when we do that, you know, it's by faith that we access those promises that grace has provided. We're actually bringing those things from the spiritual realm into the natural realm. And that faith has, we can we know when we're operating in faith because there's evidence associated with it. Yep. We can see the evidence of faith in a manifestation of healing, manifestation of provision, all these different, all these different natural, natural ways. But more than that, it, it changes the way we speak. Yep. It changes the way that we act, and it keeps us in perfect peace. Amen. It really does. And then we looked at how faith works by love. You know, Galatians five, is it five six? Five verse six. Galatians five verse six says, "Faith works by love." When we understand how much God loves us, when we understand His unconditional love for us, that's what ignites our faith. You know, when we understand that God loves us, is not withholding from us, then that ignites our faith. That's that's our faith. And we love Him. You know, we looked at also um, John, was it 1 John 5, five verse. <laughs> verse 19, somewhere around there, that, that we love Him because He first loved us. And, you know, when we receive God's love for us, we're able to, to love and be at peace and see faith work in our life, praise God. So yep. faith works by love. It's powerful. And um, so many other things as well, that, so many other details we went into. Um, I'd, I'd really encourage you to either go back and watch the previous episodes or better yet, get the, the actual product, um, uh, Everyday Faith, because we go into more detail. There's more lessons. Uh, we go into more detail, uh, to more, more examples, and it's really going to help you receive from God, praise God. God's heart is for you to receive today. He's got good things for you. He's only got good things for you. He only gives good gifts. He only gives perfect gifts. And He has good things for you to receive today. Amen. And the way you're going to receive them is by faith, by trusting in Him and by believing in Him, praise God. So today you're going to learn how to receive from God. Amen. 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 So the aspect of faith that we're talking about today is um, is sight that comes through faith. You almost forgot what we were going to talk about today. <laughs> I didn't. We we're going to talk about I got a little bit sight. there, but developing spiritual sight. You Amen. know, faith sees things. Last time we talked about faith speaking, but this time we're talking about faith seeing. We can see by faith. There are several times in the New Testament where Jesus said he saw by faith or he saw their faith. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm thinking of the time, um, the example of the, the paralytic man, where they, they yeah. tore the roof off, yeah. the four crazy Lowered friends, him down. Tore the roof off to get the man in and lowered him down on the, on the stretcher. And it says, Jesus saw their faith, seeing their faith. You know, we, he, he could see by their very actions. You know, and people don't just naturally go tearing the roof off to get into a room. Right? When, I was a youth pastor, when I was a youth pastor, um, I don't know if you remember this, but the, the, the church I went to, we decided to reenact this during the sermon. So my friend was preaching. He was the associate pastor, do you remember? And there was a skylight in the in the church. So we decided to try and do the low in the man oh through the skylight. Goodness. Do you remember that? So we put like styrofoam, polystyrene over the skylight and pretended that it was really bad. Like the rope slipped and the guy like came halfway down. 
<laughs> he nearly fell from the roof. He wasn't that high. Anyway, it just reminded me of that low and free. We reenacted. Anyway. We were very much into reenacting the stories of Jesus when we preached because we were visual teachers and that one I'm glad you didn't, didn't go work. for the crucifixion no that one didn't no, that one didn't work too well that one they fell he, the guy fell down he was holding onto the rope it wasn't good but anyway that was Jesus could see their <laughs> he faith he had four crazy friends though <laughs> four crazy friends definitely see Jesus saw their faith yeah because you know, their actions were changed by it's it like James 2 in, in James chapter 2 it says faith without works is dead well faith without corresponding actions if you really believe something you're going to act on it it's going to it's going to cause you to act it's going to cause you to action and it's also going to make you speak differently and that's how one of the ways we can see faith. When you, mm. when you see people, they're acting a certain way, they're speaking a certain way. You know, the woman with the issue of blood, she was, she was saying within herself, you know, we already looked at this in a previous lesson, but she was speaking within herself, if I touch the hem of his garment, I'm going to be healed. And then she took a bold step of action. She went into a crowd where she shouldn't have been mm. to touch his, the hem of his garment. So it calls her to action. So you could see the faith in her. So faith can be seen. And I'm telling you, when people are in faith, I remember we was at a conference one time, uh, I believe it was Atlanta, Georgia, and a guy came forward and he set, He had these medical shoes on. They, were, they had special soles. One was a bigger sole than the other, and they were like these black medical shoes. Yeah, and then he put down a set of trainers or sneakers, depending on what continent you're watching. You know, this goes out to uh, three different continents, so we have to sometimes change our language. Bilingual, honey. Sneakers. Tennis shoes. Runners, tennis shoes, trainers, whatever you want to call them. They, uh, they, he actually brought a pair of those with him and set them down. And then he came for prayer. And I was like, that's interesting. And he told me he had these flat foot condition. He couldn't run and his walking was very hobbled. And he had to have these special medical shoes. He took those medical shoes off and put those runners on, put those sneakers on. And we prayed for him. I'm telling you, this guy, he ran. You remember he ran around the auditorium mm -hmm. and I ran with him around the auditorium. He was healed, 100% healed right there. Now, by him bringing his trainers, to me, I was like, I could see faith in this guy. Right, he now, was expecting. It's important to say this. You don't do something to produce the faith. We already looked at this before. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So you get into the Word of God, you, get into, you, you hear the truth about who God is, about how much He loves you and about His promises He has for you, like health and healing, like provision, prosperity, mm -hmm. like the forgiveness of sins, those type of things, like, like uh, peace, peace of mind. You, you find out about those things and the more you learn about those things and the more you listen to faith-based teachings, the more you listen to these type of teachings, the more you're going to start, the faith's going to start to come because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And then it drives you to action. What Sometimes we make the mistake, I've been there as well, I've made this mistake. I think if I do the action, then the faith will come. And that's the wrong way around. We don't do the action, then the faith comes. We get the faith and then the action comes. We get motivated to do it and then, and then we go out and right. do it. So right. that's important. But we can yeah. see faith. So yeah. have we got some examples can, about how we, we can see faith? Yes, absolutely. We can, we can see faith in others, but we can also see by faith. There's two different aspects So there's seeing there. faith in others mm -hmm. and then there's seeing by faith. Exactly. So like uh, Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, I believe it is, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, he says, we walk by faith, not by sight. So yeah. we can see by faith. Yeah. You see, you know, we've talked about one of the, the, the aspects of faith is that faith is, is spiritual. It's not linked to our emotions. It's not emotional. Hebrews 11 verse 1 says that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Mm. See, faith doesn't operate in a natural sense going by what we can only see. Now, you can see the effects of faith, as we just mentioned, but faith, spiritual sight is not developed by looking only at things that are in the natural. Is, is the evidence of things not seen. It's seeing with a supernatural spiritual vision. It's seeing things in the spiritual realm before we see things in the physical realm. You know, many years ago, I was in um, a wheelchair. I was... Um, and had a lot of seizures from epilepsy, had brain damage, and um, they wasn't sure whether I was ever going to walk again. I was 18 years old, in a wheelchair, probably about a year old believer, a year older in, 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 in faith. And I didn't have this, you know, one of the things we've said is that faith is not complicated, and yeah. praise God, because at that point, I needed faith to be very uncomplicated. I was facing an, literally a, a mountain of struggle, and my whole life was about to be um, turned upside down. And, um, and as, I, as I started to, to study the Word of God, I saw that God had a different plan for my life. I just started to see myself differently. And this is where faith starts to kick in. My, my spiritual sight started to see things that my natural eyes couldn't yet see. Mm. In my spiritual sight, I could see myself climbing a mountain. I could see myself walking and running and not, not but in my, in, my, in my natural sight, all I saw was a wheelchair. So you naturally, you just saw the circumstances. Mm -hmm. but you're saying in the spirit realm, you could see, you had vision, you could yeah. see spiritual sight. Absolutely. Yeah. 
And, you know, I started to meditate. I started to think about it. I started to dream about being out of that wheelchair, dream about the next few months ahead, about climbing a mountain, about going on this, this vacation with my, my outdoor activity uh, and with my youth group and climbing mountains and canoeing, all the things that right at that moment that seemed completely impossible. Mm -hmm. But the more I started thinking about it, the more real it became to me. And what was happening in that moment was spiritual sight, faith, the faith sight was being um, developed on the inside of me. You know, we see things on the inside before we see things on the outside. Mm, yeah. This is hugely important. And I mean, it's, it's a long story, but in a, in a nutshell, it was that spiritual sight that helped me to take my first few steps. You know, you don't have to, if you're in a struggle today, you don't have to believe God to get up and run a marathon. You just have to believe God to take the first step. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So faith means being prepared to take the first step. And, we, you know, and sure enough, all those things I saw on the inside of me, they came to pass. So you saw yourself healed. This is really mm -hmm. important. Sometimes we see ourselves sick. We mm -hmm. see ourselves poor. Mm -hmm. We see ourselves struggling. Because that's all we can see in the natural. And we don't see ourselves. And that's that vision for ourselves. Like, we don't see ourselves. You know, I'm thinking, you know, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Yeah, Proverbs. And, and if we see ourselves in that condition, if we see ourselves like that, it can be very hard to, to you know, just in the natural. You know, they take people that are natural, uh, you know, just in the natural, they're, they're very successful and say they're a millionaire in the natural and they lose everything, it's just a matter of time before they get it all back again and they become very wealthy financially again. And the reason is because they see themselves as that person. They see themselves with someone who's rich, if you like, or see themselves successful. And then the other extreme is they did, they did a study of lottery winners and they found out that, I think it's something like over 80% of lottery winners end up going broke because they saw themselves poor. People usually, and I'm not, you know, this isn't a, I don't want to get people mad or anything, but I've never played the lottery of, because I, 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 if you look at it, it's like a tax on the poor person. It's so, the, the, the odds are so stacked against you. Why would you spend money on it? So wealthy people don't usually play the lottery. If you, if the, you, because they, they don't believe studies. their life is up to chance. They don't believe their life is up to chance. So anyway, the people who play the lottery are already inclined to think that they're poor. Mm -hmm. They already have that way of thinking. So that's why they have the lottery kiosk and that in poorer neighborhoods. But anyway, so they play the lottery, they win the lottery, but they still see themselves poor, even though they might have millions of dollars. Right. And before long, they end up poor again. Right. So it shows you how you see yourself beyond the natural circumstances. Even in the natural makes a big difference. It does. And if you see yourself sick, if you see yourself, you know, they've done other research with, with like cancer victims. And they've, they've made them have visions of their future and made them, you know, think about their, their hopes and dreams. And, you know, they, they, they've, they maybe have a, um, a goals of doing things, goals mm -hmm. of getting married or goals of doing a marathon. There's one thing that sickness naturally does is it will make you focus only on in what's happening now. Right now, in the, yeah, and in what the you physical. can't do. You yep. can't do this, you can't do that, mm -hmm. rather than have you focus on what you can do. Because faith plans what you for the could future. Do. Faith plans for the future, that's great. Mm -hmm. Faith plans for the future. Now, here's an example of this. I'm looking at um, the feeding of the fire thousand and we haven't got time to go into the whole story but um, you know basically what happened was is Jesus was teaching there was 5,000 men present it says besides women and children so it could have been 10,000 15,000 people and they got very hungry the disciples tried to fix it they couldn't fix it the hour was late there was no Walmart or Asda's or you know no big store no anywhere. 24 hour no, stores no 24 hour <laughs> stores around no 7-eleven so they needed some food and what happened was they found a boy with some loaves and fish and they said we have no more than five loaves and two fish and Jesus said, this is, I'm, I'm reading out of uh, Luke's gospel. This is Luke 9, in Luke 9, this is Luke's gospel. And Jesus said, bring them to me, bring the loaves and fish to me. And watch this, this is uh, Luke 9, 16. Then Jesus took the five loaves and two fish and looking up to heaven. Now, if you study this verse out, looking up to heaven, this phrase looking up to heaven means looking into the spirit realm, looking beyond the natural mm -hmm. resources, looking into the kingdom mm -hmm. way of doing things. He blessed and broke them. He gave thanks for those few loaves and few, uh, few fish. Imagine this. Imagine you've got a, this is the equivalent to having like a $200,000 debt and someone gives you $10. You know, how many of us would give thanks? Thank you, God, for this $10. I have a seed. Most of us would just look at that and think, well, what is so few among so many? Exactly what the right? disciples said. Exactly. What's so few among so many? They'd say, we'd curse our seed and say, that's not enough. That's not going to work. And sometimes, you know, there's, God's given you opportunities. He's given you small business ideas. He's given you jobs, overtime, whatever it is. He's given you something small as a seed for you to, to start thanking him for. And he can, he can multiply that seed, praise God. And just like here with the feeding of the 5,000, there was 5,000 men who, were, who ate and were filled by these few loaves and few fish because right. Jesus looked into the spirit realm. He saw that God was gonna provide. 
He gave thanks for the seed and then he broke it and distributed amongst them, gave it if you like. And it says here, they were, they were all ate and were filled. So Jesus looked beyond the natural circumstances. The natural circumstances was the hour was late. Mm -hmm. They were in a deserted place. And all they had was a few loaves and a few fish. He, and they had 5,000 men. He looked beyond the natural circumstances. Right. So he, he saw the same things as everyone else in the natural though. Yeah. It wasn't like his, his eyes were closed. He didn't deny it and no. say, oh no, really, there's a whole lot more fish. Yeah. And, you know, faith is not, and this is important, faith is not denying that the, the, there's, a, there's a truth, there's a fact in the natural realm. It's not saying, I don't have cancer, when right. clearly the doctor's report says I, that you have cancer. Or, right. you know, I, I have enough when, when clearly you're starving. It's not denying a natural circumstance, but faith goes beyond the natural circumstance. It goes beyond the lack of right. resources. It goes beyond the symptom in your physical body. It goes beyond the doctor's report. And it says, this might be a truth, but I have another truth. I have the Word of God. That I have another report. The truth. I have the truth. And the truth of what God says about it in the spiritual realm, it trumps how I feel about it in the natural. Amen. This is another great example. This is Abraham. Um, uh, believe for Sarah, and this is, I'm just going to jump right in here. This is Romans 4, and in Romans 4, it said, um, uh, Romans 4, 19, you know, God gave Abraham a word, if you like, a promise, and said, you're going to have great descendants. Mm -hmm. And listen to this, in Romans 4, 19, it says, not being weak in faith, so Abraham used his faith, not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was 100 years old. So I don't want to go into a uh, biology in the, lesson In the here. physical world, the body 100 was... 100 years exhausted. old, 100 years old, he was... He said his body was dead. I'm not going to go into that. You can Google it or ask your parents or whatever if you want to. <laughs> Since he was about 100 years old. And the deadness of Sarah's womb. He chose not to consider the deadness of his body or the deadness of Sarah's womb. Uh, and he did not waver at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. Verse 21, being fully convinced that what he had promised, what God had promised him, he was able to perform. And they, therefore, it was accounted to him for righteousness. You know, mm -hmm. Abraham, similar to Jesus here, didn't look at the natural circumstances. He looked beyond the natural circumstances and Abraham concentrated on the word that God had given him. Your descendants are going to be like the stars of the sky. Right. Your descendants are going to be like the, 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 uh, the, the grains of the, of the, the sand. Yeah. sand. Grains of the sand, yeah, is that right? right? Yeah, grains of the sand on the beach. Or on the, mm -hmm. I guess it wasn't the beach, it was the desert. It is but, the uh, God that. gave him specific instructions, right? Gave him mm -hmm. specific promises and then Abraham was able to focus Focus on them rather than focus on the on the deadness of his body and the deadness of Sarah's womb. Yeah, and you know we've we've talked about him in in previous um, lessons as well. You know when we really believe something, it changes how we act. Mm -hmm. Now I don't get into biology lesson either, but if if Abraham really didn't believe what God had spoken to him that he was going to be the father of many nations, he would have looked at his body. He would have looked at his wife's body and thought, no chance. nothing going on here. Well, there, there's only been one immaculate conception, and it wasn't Isaac. Okay. He, they had to put some action to their faith. And explain. Yeah. Well, anyway. Tell they, me, what do you mean? I mean, there had to be some antics, you know, there had to be some romance. There had to be something going on there, right? I thought the stalk came in. And... Anyway, there was action to their faith and the evidence was Isaac. I think you know the rest of the story, okay? But we have to, oh my goodness, you'll make me blush. We, every time I got pregnant, actually, we had three kids. Ashley's like, how did that happen? How did that happen? I'm like, I don't know how it happened. I don't know how it happened. Anyway. Just, one day, I, one day he'll figure it out. I had a small part to play. Maybe you can write to Ashley and explain to these things to him. I had a small part Very to play. Very small part, actually. honey. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Moving on. Mm -hmm. We, you know, faith sees beyond the natural circumstances. Amen. Let's look at this in Second Kings. Second Kings, um, we'll start in verse 15. It says, When a servant of the man of God rose early in the morning and went out, a fool surrounded the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what do we do? And they were having a bit of a trouble here. And he said, Do not be afraid, for there are more with us than there are with them. Now he's probably thinking, Hang a second, I've just got up. It's in the morning. Yeah. I've opened the doors. There's a whacking great army out there. I haven't even had my coffee yet. This whacking is a great really this is a big bad army. morning. Thousands okay? of soldiers, big and, army. And Elisha's like, hey, no problem. There's more with us than there is with them. And Elisha's probably doing, you know, Gehazi is probably doing this double take thinking, is, is he not like, is he not, not woken up yet? Because I'm seeing a huge army and right. there's like one, two. There's only two of us. There's lots of them. Something's not computing. And then verse 17, it says, then Elisha prayed, Lord, open the eyes, open his eyes and let him see. So the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw that the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire surrounding Elisha. Mm. Now, it wasn't that Gehazi's servant couldn't see. 
His eyes were open. His physical eyes were open. What Elisha was talking about here was the eyes of Gehazi's understanding. Mm. His spiritual eyes. Lord, open his spiritual eyes so that he can see into the spirit realm like I can see into the spirit realm. So that he can see by faith like I'm seeing by faith. And it says, And when they had came down, Elisha prayed to the Lord, strike these people with blindness. And he struck them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. And, and basically the end, of the, the end of the story is these the prophet and, and, and the servant were supernaturally delivered from this whole situation because it, it, it just took the, the Lord to open the servant's eyes so that he could start seeing. He, for, for a moment, he just kind of like took the veil away so he could start seeing with spiritual sight. Into the spiritual realm. Into the spiritual realm, the, the power that was on their side. Mm. And I think sometimes we forget this. We look only at our natural circumstances. We look at the lack. We look at, you know, not in, uh, what are f- so few among so many. Right. We look at the bank account. We look at the doctor's report. Yeah. We, you know, we just look and we only see naturally and we forget the almighty power of God that's in us and yeah. through us. Man, God is on your side today. I just want to encourage you. You are a person of faith. Amen. You have the you. If you've received Jesus into your heart at some point, you have all of the faith you need to accomplish everything God's called you to do. To receive every single one of His promises that He has laid up for you. You are not weak in the faith department. And here's my prayer for you today: that the Lord would open the eyes of your understanding, that you might be able to see into the spirit realm what are the what is the immense riches of His grace and His power towards you, in you, and through you. Amen. He has called you to victory over whatever situation that you're going through. There really is no weapon formed against you that can prosper. God is on your side and He has set you up for success. And it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what the doctor says. It doesn't matter what the bank manager says. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what the government says. You know, let me let me just say this. It doesn't matter what government's on the throne. Jesus is still on the throne. What right? government's in power? It doesn't matter what government's in power, it doesn't matter who, what, what king is, is in his kingdom. Jesus is still on the throne. Again, there may be people watching from countries that... This is important. Some countries with godly governments, some countries with ungodly governments. You know what? At the end of the day, Jesus trumps it all. Jesus Amen. is on, on the throne. He's the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Mm-hmm. And um, God, your government cannot stop you receiving the promise of God. That's right. Your parents can't stop you receiving the promise of God. You know, your, your employer, wherever you work, can't stop you receiving the promise of God. Your bank manager can't, your doctor can't, your spouse can't. You know, the only person that can stop you receiving the promises of God is you. If you choose to resist God, if you choose to not be in faith, if you choose to only look at the natural circumstances, if you choose to only go with the natural, then you can stop the promises of God coming about. That's mm-hmm. why death and life are in the power of our time. Right. That's why God says, you know, I set before you heaven and um, I, I call heaven and earth as witnesses. I, I set yeah. before you life and death. Choose life. Yep. You know, it's our choice. We have free will and it's our choice to choose to receive the promises of God. And this can manifest in all different ways. But I'm telling you, if you're in a situation, look beyond the natural circumstance. Get your focus off of the natural circumstance and look into the spirit realm. Look into the kingdom way of doing things. The way you do that is by finding the promises of God. If you're in a situation, maybe like we've talked about, maybe you're in a situation of lack, whatever they may look like for you. You're in a situation of lack. You haven't got enough. You look up, you know what? You look up Philippians 4.19. My God will supply all your need according to His riches in glory, not according to your government, not according to your workplace, not according to your savings account, according to His riches in glory. You know, you start meditating on those promises, start realising, you know, look up uh, places that God's got promises specifically in that area. And when you do that, you take a hold of that promise, you start meditating on that promise, you start thanking God for that promise. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus said when we pray, start giving thanks like we've received it before we've received it. Right. Was Jesus telling us to fake it till we make it? No, He's saying you've already received it in the Spirit. Start thanking God for it. That will put you yeah. in faith and that will bring that from the Spirit realm over into the natural realm. Yeah. That's why Jesus gave thanks for them loaves and fish. Mm. You know, this is really important because sometimes if we've been dealing with the situation for such a long time, mm. it's actually our spiritual sight that's damaged. You know, if, if, if you've been chronically sick, I was chronically sick for, for such a long time. I, I thought sick, I dreamed sick. You saw yourself, I saw sick. Myself you saw yourself sick. sick. 
I saw myself as Carly the epileptic, as Carly that can't work, as Carly that can't drive, as Carly that, that has to take medication multiple times a day, that, that, that's never going to be free from this. And the whole time I was thinking, you know, sickness doesn't just get in your body, it gets in your mind. Mm. Poverty doesn't just get in your, in your life and in your finances, it gets in your mind. Right. It starts to change how you see yourself. It wasn't until I allowed God to show me a picture of me, how He created me to be on the inside of me, that, that, that to, to really form my identity as a child of God, to start to see myself as well, that I could ever start to experience um, healing in my, in my physical body. If you're dealing, I just want to encourage somebody, if, you, if you're chronically sick or chronically poor, whatever the situation is, if you've been dealing with, with a situation for such a long time that you can't imagine yourself any other way, there is still hope, amen? And so we're gonna, we're gonna pray for you in, in just a moment, but God can open the eyes of your understanding and start to paint on the inside of you a new picture Amen. of how He sees Himself, because He wants to lead you in health, in wealth, and in victory in every area of your life. Amen. Amen, amen. I wanna pray for you before we go. Yeah. And um, you know, just like Carly said, you can see into the spirit realm. God's gonna give you eyes to see into His kingdom, praise God. So I'm gonna pray for you wherever you are right now, receive this. Father God, I thank you for everyone watching and listening today. I thank you, Lord, you have good promises for them. You've got good things for them. I thank you, Lord, you're their provider. You're their healer. I thank you, Lord, you're their peace. I thank you, Lord, you, you, you've got everything good for them. And I thank you, Lord, we're gonna start seeing that in the spirit realm. We're gonna start, you're gonna open the eyes of our hearts, Lord. Right now, Lord, I pray you'll open the eyes of the people watching and listening right now so they can see into that spirit realm. They can see your promises and not just their natural circumstances. And right now, I declare breakthrough in those areas. I declare healings right now, pain to leave bodies, lack to leave, leave lives in Jesus' name, peace to come upon people and people to start receiving and, and all, the, all your promises and start seeing your promises come about in their life in Jesus' name. Amen. amen, amen. Praise Peace. God, good. Mm -hmm. Amen. We'll receive that today and we'll be back real soon with the rest of this series, Everyday Faith. We'll see you next time. To order your copy of this teaching, visit our website, teradesministries.com or call us at 719-600-3344. Did you know that you can see into the spirit realm? That's right. You have the ability by faith to see into the spiritual realm beyond your natural circumstances. God has amazing, precious promises for you. He wants a life for you that's full of health and, and, and prosperity and wholeness and peace and security. He has precious promises that He wants to start revealing to you. So if you'd like to start developing some spiritual sight, I would encourage you to get this whole product series called Everyday Faith. To order your copy of this teaching, visit our website, teradesministries.com or call us at 719-600-3344. Colorado, are you ready to live an abundant life? I had chronic pain in my shoulder. I can't sleep at night. I'm healed. I can hear better. Praise God. Yeah, Thank so you, soon. Praise God. Ashley and Carly Terrades will be joined by special guests, Prophet Joseph Z and Pastor Lawson Purdue at their free Abundant Life event. You know, because Jesus came not just to give us life, but to give us life more abundantly. Amen. God's got provision for everyone to live an abundant life. Abundant Life Event Colorado Springs 2019, Saturday, April 27th at Karis Christian Center. Find more details on our website, AbundantLifeEvent.com. Oh, Ashley and Carly, I think they're amazing. Um, you know, I think they have a great ministry. I think they're inspired. I think God's really working in their life. Join Ashley and Carly in spreading the good news of abundance and freedom. Become a partner today.